<laughs> All right, hey guys, I'm Don Diggs, and welcome to season two, episode four here at the Coffee Tavern. Now we're here with David and our our very intelligent editor, Trevor. Shut the fuck up. Oh, okay. Hello. All right. All right. Aggressive. Woke up and chose violence. But yeah, so today we're going to be talking about a few things, actually. As you can see here, David, you play Just Rocket there. League. I do. Now, what keeps you playing Rocket League? That's the real question. I mainly play Rock League for the competitive aspect. I just love just grinding the game, which is sad to say, but I just love playing games against people and just getting better because the game has no skill ceiling. Like even pro players are finding new mechanics and just getting better and better at the game. So there's always something to go back to. It's not like it gets dead. Fair that enough. really that always surprises me because every time I've ever played Rocket League, <laughs> I, I always feel burnt out because I'm not doing competitive. I'm kind of just playing for the fun. Yeah, and no, you can't can have fun and play. It. I can't lie, I had to take like a four month break because I just started to get tired and I just. But now I'm not. I'm not having fun with it. So coming back to it, having fun. Just gonna try and get better. Hopefully make it to a uh, Grand Champ too. Yeah. Got to the border of that before, but uh, couldn't get there. Yeah, because I know with Rocket League, it's like there's no there's ways to get better, but there's also ways to like people to counteract you getting better. If that makes sense as far as the different skill sets of players and how players like mostly play. teammates, mostly teammates. Yeah, and your teammates <laughs> that you have with you. Yeah, they can like problem. prohibit you from like getting a rank up if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, in my eyes, I really feel like. A lot of people shouldn't blame solo queuing, which is just playing by yourself and getting random teammates. Because from my experience, I solo queued all the way up until Grand Champ, which is the top like 0.1% of the player base or 0.3. Which I feel like if I can do that solo queued, um, I feel like anybody can and I feel like it's not an excuse. No, I, I definitely understand that. Because it's like you can't really blame anyone else from you getting better at the game you know what i'm saying oh like everyone else does that <laughs> <laughs> dude you meet the most interesting characters in that game <laughs> that's for sure yeah no definitely i could uh, i've seen the memes on my <laughs> have you seen the things that i've sent into the discord no, here I'll, I'll throw it up on the, the screen no. right now <laughs> <laughs> are you talking about the screen of the one dude going one you're better than me two you're probably a woman <laughs> yeah yeah you're cute right now there you go Oh, oh boy. Uh, what a time. Oh, no. Dude, I get called a woman so much, and I don't know why. I think it's because I say good luck, have fun in the beginning of the match, and uh, <laughs> people aren't used to that. <laughs> Female. I, I Woman. Don't people don't like, like I said before, you're not allowed to have fun and play Rocket League, especially if you're playing competitive. Okay. I mean, no one wants you to have fun for some reason. Dude, it's always like 90% of the time you get the reaction of people just like passively aggressively don't like you. 5% of the time the people are toxic to you and just like, rude as hell and then the other five percent of the time the people appreciate your kindness yeah either other people are toxic or you're toxic no nah, that's fair it rubs out on someone <laughs> someone's getting pissed <laughs> uh we had another question regarding whether you like competitive or casual but uh you yeah, know sorry, I've been answered. I, I love the competitive aspect of the game yeah now it, let's go back it's weird because it's a seemingly like small game when you look at it because you know, it's it's soccer in the end. Car soccer. Car, yeah, car soccer. But like, it's such a small environment as compared to like I don't know, like we'll say like a battle royale or something like that. Yeah, like COD. Mhm. Mm Where you just have so much shit to do. It, it's funny how someone can keep coming back to that game. Like it, it's just impressive to me because I yeah. could never do it. Um. Next question though. What is your most and least favorite game mode in Rocket League, and why? We know <laughs> Rocket League has multiple uh kind of like freestyle game modes, Ooh. so. You know. uh, I've never been a fan of the limited edition ones, like the football one or like the Heat Seeker one. Those all have been I've never like I played them once and that's it. But Wait, like for the ones that spike, or is that it, like it's called spikes? Gridion. Gridion. And I brought it out for the Super Bowl. Basically, yeah, it's like Spike Ball except you know, there's a football, and oh God. that game mode is terrible. <laughs> and like, I can imagine spike. people hitting the point of the football because like if it's <laughs> soccer, like it's, it's fucking terrible. different. But like, like cube. for like the actual like standard modes that like are usually around um my favorite has to be hoops i think hoops is just so fun because people get so angry in that mode if you can't play it or if you dumpster them 
So if you're good in that game mode, you find the best reactions. And the mode that I hate absolutely the most is hands down Snow Day. Snow Day is the most brain numbing mode I've ever played. Yeah, no, we're gonna. Uh, I'm sorry, I ranked up. up. I ranked up so much on this stupid game mode before. I, I mean, I got carried by some other people, but I, I mean, I prefer uh, Spike Rush. I thought Spike Rush was so much fun when they came out with that for like five minutes. Yeah, it was fun. It's just boring after your first two matches. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. in the end, I've it's just never... rumble. I've never played Rocket League like that. I played it on my PlayStation maybe about like a few good times with like friends and whatnot. I never took it as like competitive or anything, but I do. I personally feel like the game's annoying when it comes to like how easy it is to like fuck up things. Like I mean, fun part. it's a very like sensitive game. Like yeah, you like barely touch your joystick in the wrong direction, you're just missing. Yeah, I've seen clips of people like going in like mid air. Just doing all these tricks and shit to keep the ball steady. Dude, you know what's crazy? They straight up have freestyling tournaments. And those oh. things are wild. I can smell that. <laughs> <laughs> With the grime and sweat and the yeah. tears. Oh. I missed my double flippery set three times in a row. <laughs> I lost fifty thousand dollars because of it. <laughs> I hit a flipper set. Like just ran I was playing um drop shot. And at the very oh, last God. second, we had 13 seconds left. I remember so vividly. Uh, we were literally just about to lose. Or maybe we were tied. I broke the tie by hitting a flipper set on accident. And I fucking slammed the ball straight into the hole. It was amazing. But that, that was my best it moment. Count, in though, it's drop it, shot. <laughs> it was also on accident. I don't know how to do a flipper set still. But like... Oh, really? I, I don't play the game anymore. But, but like a flipper set... <laughs> Basically, like, in the game, you can't really get a flip when you're in the air. Because, like, you know how you can dash around. Well, usually, after a certain amount of time, your flip goes away. But you, if you can touch your wheels on the ball midair, you can get your flip back indefinitely. So people will use that to get a flip in the air to confuse their opponents. And you just keep getting a chain. You hit the ball with your wheels, and then Dude. you can flip into it, and then you yeah, get the ball again. Yeah, that's a big again. thing. Like, people try and do flip reset chains. I think someone did, like, 17 of them in a row or some shit. All right, so David, I heard you. Um, you're pretty good at bowling and whatnot. I play. I play. You play. You play. Now, the real question is exactly what do you think sets bowling apart from other competitive sports? I mean, it's it's very similar. Like all sports are very similar in the core aspects, but I feel like the thing with bowling is there's a lot of aspects that people don't realize are there. Like when you watch bowling, you're like, wow, ball goes down the lane, strike, woohoo! But people don't really know like how things work when you watch like there's different things like knowing the lane what oil is on the lane knowing your ball how your ball is going to react on the lane because you could have three different balls and throw them the same exact way down the lane and they'll react differently one might hook more one might hook less one might hook early one might hook late so like there's a big aspect of like finding the correct gear for the correct lanes and then adjusting therefore I, I like the the idea of how complex of a science bowling can be when you think of it as kind of like a, a friday night out with all your buddies and stuff yeah. at the you know the bowling lane and you have fun for a few hours uh you know you really don't think about how it can actually yeah. be that cool yeah because yeah. i heard like there's even some sort of like hand movements you have to do just to even get the ball to curve or like ricochet certain places yeah no like when i initially <clears throat> learned, started bowling like when i joined my high school team I, I never really understood like how people hook the ball or whatever. And then like when I started learning more about it, about it, like what really drew me in was the science behind it, like the actual like why these things work. And what's crazy is like you could have one ball and you could drill it a certain way and it will change how the ball rolls. Yeah, you know? no, I've definitely I've seen like the clip you showed me with the guy. He always hits like fucking strikes, dude. Those, <laughs> guys, like... those guys on the tour are crazy. I don't know. Yeah, and it's like if he's on someone's team, like how do like how how do you go against someone who gets nothing but strikes? Exactly, I, that's the big thing. Is like you see these people on tour and they're bowling like two seventy nine each game. It's like Jesus. Yeah, it's like at that point, like can you even? Because let's say, all right, let's say you have two teams of six, right? Let's say two people Usually each it's team. Teams of five. Oh, yeah. you know what? I know. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's it called? And let's just say you're bowling, right? And let's say there's two people or there's one person on each team that can bowl nothing but strikes. How do you, like, 
there's nothing higher than a strike. So how do you even win the game? Well, I mean, theoretically, like say on the tour, if they're like bowling one on one, and both of both somehow both players bowl three hundred, which is a perfect score, all strikes, they would go to a roll off, and they literally just have each bowler keep bowling until somebody does better than the other in one shot. No uh, time for hypothetical, Jane. No, no more like, what if they keep bowling strikes after that? Yeah, like... at some point somebody's <laughs> gonna mess up. Like it's very hard to go perfect because. Like, if you look down into the very specifics, like, there's things called transition and micro adjustments that you have to do when you bowl. So it's, it's like, you, it's not like you can throw the same shot and it'll strike every time. Like, you have to change it throughout the match, otherwise you will miss. All right. That's understandable. All right. Well, you know, how are we supposed to trust you, David? Like, you know, you're talking about all this bowling knowledge. How do we even know? Well, what, do, what do you bowl per game? What's your average uh, bowl? Got any, oh, my average got any pictures during school i bowled around 180 i think my average was but recently i've been bowling more like 190 200 i've been really working on getting a 200 average because i kind of need that for next season and, and uh i recall you showing me a video of a competitive bowler who uh if i'm not mistaken could not crack 100 was oh, that um <laughs> yes tom daughtery yeah, let's, let's cue a clip of this fucking sh**. Oh. <laughs> he is. Oh. He's, a, he's a gentleman. He's, <laughs> it, no, no, what's crazy is he may have bowled the lowest score in all of televised history. Oh. But because he bowled an even 100. It was but a recent, bad day. It was it was a bad day. But recently, he actually won the, um I think it was the USBC Masters. He won his first title ever, and he's actually been bowling very well, even though he suffered a stroke recently or a heart attack. Oh, Jesus. So, I mean, he really bounced back in a mad respect. That's what a grind set does. Exactly. It's crazy. All right. Well, now that we know uh, you're a trustworthy, you know, bowler, Jin, you can hit him with the next question, which will be our final question. Yeah. Let me, uh, let me holler at you quick. So, well, what's some basic advice you'd give to casual and competitive bowlers? For casual bowlers, I mean, I mean, with casual, I mean, you're not really looking for score or whatever. But if you're just like trying to get a small edge over your friends or whatever, try not to rush your shot. Just take your time. Take it easy. And a big thing is a lot of people use lower weights, like a six pound, a 10 pound ball. Like if you know you can like lift some weight and like you're not struggling to pick up that ball, try and bowl like a 12 14 pound ball it'll give you more control and it's just easier to bowl with in when you realize it because a lot of people muscle the ball which then once you muscle the ball you lose control so you really just want to use the ball's weight you don't want to really force it you know um all i can think about when you're saying six pound bowling ball is just somebody who's this massive hunk just throws the ball in the air and just hits Dude. himself or something i know someone that got hit in the forehead with a bowling ball jeez what, louise you know i don't know <laughs> i was i went the other week bowling and i was i was just doing my thing practicing and there was this guy next to me probably a solid 250 250 pounds like he was probably like maybe like six eight or something like that he was a oh big dude and this guy had a 10 pound ball and was ripping it down the middle of the lane <laughs> was there like a little fire like delorean fire trail going by in the ball or something it was about to be you saw like little particles come off it it was crazy <laughs> oh yeah no. just ripping the bowling ball couldn't be me i i was afraid he was gonna break something <laughs> he fucking misses he goes flying down the lane Dude, I was, dude, one time this one college student next to me, he threw the ball and he tripped and it went two lanes across into someone else's lane. Oh no, how to get in an accident one-on-one and bowling. <laughs> I can just imagine the, the fucking events that go on where like people discovered bowling, like all the slipping and falling and all the fucking arguments that were being had. Imagine how many lawsuits had to uh, be made before um, oh they started God. implementing bowling shoes. Yeah, really though. <laughs> people just tripping over themselves someone woke up one day was like you know what i'm sick of this shit <laughs> it invented non-slip shoes for bowling non-slip now you want to slip wait what the whole point is you want to slide with bowling shoes because if you I bowl, thought you're supposed you to get a grip so you don't fall nah you want to slide because the thing is if you grip right 
you, when you throw the ball, all your momentum gets thrown forward. So you want to slide so you don't fall. I've never slid and bowled ever in my you life. You have. You just don't realize it. Are we being lied to, Trevor? Have I don't you know. Ever, like, have you ever, like, been self-aware? Have you ever been self-aware that you've been sliding this whole time when you bowl? I yeah. thought it was the other way around. Yeah, the whole point of the bowling shoes is to slide. Like, have you ever just ran and, like, just tried to stop immediately? Like, you know you'd fall, right? So, like, when you're bowling, you you stop, but you, but you still throw the ball. It's not like you're just stopping. Like, you slide so you don't fall immediately. I mean, it makes sense considering the floor. Newfound knowledge for me that the floor is oiled. So, I mean, they wouldn't make shoes that can stop oil. That just oh. doesn't make any sense. The, yeah, them, yeah. The I lane is oiled, but what you walk on is called the approach. So, like, you know when you bowl and you have that line at the front of the lane? Oh, yeah. Yeah, behind that is the approach. So, as soon as you go past that line, that's when the oil starts. <laughs> oh, okay. So you're actually just walking on regular wooden floorboards. Like when I've finished up practice for school, we've bowled with our regular shoes on, and you'll like you'll like you'll see people just fall. <laughs> you're, just, you're just so not used to it that you just like stick, and then you just bust your ass. <laughs> the most embarrassing thing is like during matches when I initially started bowling, I had some bad form where I twist my heel because of my shoes because they stuck, because I'd have to twist my heel so I'd slide. So then, because I, I would always stick and then fall. And I, like, I've straight fallen into the lane during a match. So I'm it perplexed. Is, it is very, it's very necessary to slide. Yeah, no, I, I never would have never known. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would have uh, never guessed. Because initially, no. when I had my bad form and my bad shoes, I actually messed up my knee and my hip from not sliding. Oh. Now, that's your worst moment. What What is your best moment? Because uh, I know you said your average um, bowl, but, like, what is your best bowl, like, your best game you've ever had? My best game I ever had, I think I bowled it the other week or something like that. I think it was a 257 with seven strikes in a row. Ooh, okay. Uh, here, I think I could pull it up. All right. I forget. Um, It was recent, though. Yeah, 257. I had one, two, three, four, five strikes, and then I finished off the tenth clean. Oh shit! But uh, yeah, we no, like that, to see it. That was a fun game because I actually made two splits in order to make up that game. Was it like competitive like, against another school? Nope, just practice. <laughs> I know. Get yeah. that good practice in. Yeah, I'll send it to you. But uh, no, that was that was definitely um a very good game for me. Because that, yeah. that night I was just bowling terrible in the beginning. Bowling is a very, like, I don't know. It's a very different sport that separates itself from other sports as far as when it comes to, you know, the origin, the originality of it. Absolutely. Of, Seems more methodical than, um, say, the, like a more physical. No, absolutely. It's, it's very methodical in the terms of, like, knowing what you have to do every time. And it's very mental. It's very mental. Because if you're not feeling well, you're going to bowl terrible. I've had days where I felt just dead beat, and I've bowled like a 120. Oh, boy. Oh, that's uh, that's, nice. that's probably like three times what I can bowl. And what's so. really <laughs> impressive is like the people on the tour, like they're bowling like 30 games a day or something like that, or 30 games a week. No, it's 30 games every two days for like two weeks straight. Just bowling and bowling and bowling. And that, that is tiring. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Well, that's it then. As far as when it comes to bowling and Rocket League, the two most very, very unique sports, <laughs> I guess you could put it as. And one for being trying to juggle a ball in midair with a four wheel truck, and the other one with just trying to. Not bust your ass while knocking over some pins. Absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, so anything anybody else said? Uh not really. Not really. Yeah, sure. <laughs> no. No, I I You're positive. There's not there's not one thing anyone anyone in here wants to wants yeah, to add. No cards? Let's check today's sponsor. Trevor, pull the <laughs> Hey, today's sponsor, uh, we're uh, sponsored by...
safe. I can't actually say that. I'm cutting that out. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'll, I'll do a cool sensor over it. Like here, this little this little noise. Yeah. <laughs> He's got fucking, a deck. They fucking do the what's it called? We actually do a full advertisement. They just send us some money anyway. Do you know what's funny? Yeah. I'm learning to count cards. I'm I'm planning to count, uh, scam the casinos out of the money. That sounds cool. <laughs> I don't think you should say that. <laughs> oh no, nah, it's legal. All right. So next question, David. When did you decide that you want <laughs> to scam the casinos out of the money? Yeah. Uh, ever since I was about 15. Oh, okay. so not longer. <laughs> well, I'm not like 12, dude. Yeah. Like at nine, I realized that the casinos were corrupt. I had to fix this problem. They have too much an advantage, man. You gotta take that away. I learned at a young age when That's I lost funny. my dollar from playing a betting game with my father. Dude, gambling's fun. Blackjack, unless you lose. Blackjack's where it's at. It's the only thing I know how to play. Dude, that's what I'm. That's what I'm learning. I'm learning to count cards. The only Shit. bets I know how to play is is not studying before a test. So when I turn 21, I'm going to casinos, funny. playing Hold'em, and I'm playing Blackjack. Hold'em? Uh, when are you going to let him go? I have no idea what that game is. Two-card poker? I don't know how to play poker. poker. I, I've never been a poker guy. I've I always want to learn, but one I don't really care. Aunt, but I Dude, never got the hang of it. Love poker. It's so fun. All right, guys. So that's going to be it today. Uh, thank you, David, for coming in You know, and talking to us about your two interesting skills that you have. Absolutely. And uh, I want to give a, you know, thanks for Trevor, you know, for, you know, yeah, editing. Thank you, Trevor. Yeah, you know, get a little, you know what? You still edit. got time. I don't have to edit this. I'm just going to pump it out as is. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a fucking mess. Oh, boy. Trevor, you know what? Make yourself a little edit that says thanks, Trevor. On the screen. I, do, I think I do that every single podcast. You, uh, you got to find it. Uh, next episode, um, look for the one frame. I'm, I'm a whole Ray William Johnson. Find the one hidden frame in which I thank myself and we'll give away like uh, like icy hot patches or something. <laughs> All right, yeah. that's, that's going to be it. That's icy hot be. Benadryl. Benadryl, <laughs> jeez Louise. We will give out medication to our viewers. No, no, no. We're no, not. We are not. <laughs> we're not legally responsible for any issue. The Coffee Tavern uh, TM will not uh, distribute medication to its viewers. Whoa! Unless you pay. Just... Oh. <laughs> That's it.